Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Walter and I'm here presenting with Una Daly from CCC OER. Una, did you wanna? Uh, hi everyone, I'm uh, thrilled to be here and working with Walter on this. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, CCC OER, which is the community, um, community College Consortium of Open Educational Resources. And what we've done is we've looked at participation rates within the listserv. Um, but before we jump into all that fun detail, we have a little poll up here for you. Um, just to figure out where you're from, give us some background information so we know who's in our group. Um, you can access this poll with the link there with pollevd.com, Walter Butler 621. Or you can use your smartphone if you have one available and you can text to 37607. And then you plug in Walter Butler 621. And then you can enter in a letter to respond to that poll. And as you respond to that and access that, just a little bit about myself. I'm a librarian at Pasadena City College, which is a community college in Southern California. And Una? Uh, yeah, I'm the director of the Community College Consortium for OER. And we were just thrilled when um, Walter wanted to take a look at our community of practice and um, basically make it part of his research project for his um, PhD thesis. So uh, boy, it was an offer that we were so happy to accept. Great. So it looks like most of us or all of us are from North America. So welcome everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a follow-up question here too, just asking if you are from a two-year institution or a community college, yes or no. Good to see we have a little more diversity. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I, I would add that I think our listserv has been a really key part of building our community. And so having someone take a look at it from a research perspective is, is really fascinating um, because we're out there, you know, fielding the questions and posting materials, um, but in terms of like actually sitting back and looking, that's really interesting. Just one last question here, <laughs> just to gauge who's listening to us today. Um, and this all ties back into the data later um, that I have been examining, so. I think we have at least one instructor counselor. <laughs> oh yeah, multiple roles. <laughs> yeah, multiple roles, yeah. All right, librarians win. Very well, okay. I think this might be my slide. Um, so we were founded about 13 years ago. Um, in California, as, as it turns out, um, but really was always were meant to be a consortium and, um, you know, work with community colleges around the country and in fact, uh, across North America, since there's a lot of um, uh, similarity between the Canadian and the, and the US system and uh, promoting the awareness and adoption of open educational resources, policies and practices. Um, and so we offer a lot of different online activities. Um, in addition to just our listserv, we have monthly webinars. Uh, we do um, workshops um, and we're at many conferences as well. And you can find out more information at our website if you're not familiar with us. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like a lot of folks here are from community colleges. So I don't, I'll just repeat this very quickly. So community colleges in the United States and Canada are they're open access. So um, open admissions to all. 
um, and they're very low cost compared to our four-year colleges and universities. And they, um, they can be used as the first two years of college um, or university. And you can then transfer in as a junior uh, into a university uh, by through one of our community colleges, but um, other folks um, tap into the community colleges for workforce development. And so to get certificates as well. And we also have concurrent high schoolers. Um, so that would be our secondary students coming in um, to take courses and also um, students who maybe have graduated from high school, but still need preparation uh, to be ready for college level um, materials. And uh, community college students represent 41% of our US undergraduate students. So this is a very significant population. And, you know, just to kind of differentiate between um, what students at uh, four year uh, colleges, universities versus community college, the average age um, is about 28 years old. Um, most students are working uh, while full time attending college. And um, uh, our institutions are over 50% diverse, which is now what we call um, minority majority institutions. So um, not so not the traditional what was once a traditional um, representation of students at, at higher in higher ed, and females um, outnumber males uh, by about 7%. And finally, this is a little graph to show you um, how the how our membership has grown over the years. And so uh, we're only tracking from 2012 through 2018 for this presentation, but you can see that there was a big jump kind of right there in the middle. 2017 was a really big jump for us and um, it's continued to grow um, at, at a fairly significant rate since then. Back to you, Walter. Okay, great. So as we mentioned, this exploration is part of a larger project that I'm embarking on as part of a PhD dissertation. Um, so what I'm really looking at is how community college librarians are participating within CCC OER um, in order to support their institutional OER initiatives, if there is one. Um, so in this first stage, and this is a project that has two stages. So the first stage is what I'm sharing today is really when I looked at CCC OER's listserv to understand what levels of participation was happening there and who was participating, how often they're participating and what they're talking about. And then I'm also later that sets up for stage two so I could identify different librarians to interview to figure out how they were generating value from their participation for their institutional efforts. Um, so because this is part of that larger project, I did want to send out a quick thank you to my supervisory team out there, um, since we're very um, part of being in open education is sharing, right, and being grateful to others. So I wanted to share that out to them, to um, Drs. Bill Fisher, Ian Stidley, and Jason Watson. Um, so part of this process, I had to do a content analysis of the listserv. And I was looking at two main questions when I was doing this. So I was looking at what does the participation look like? And then the second part was how do community college librarians participate within that context? So I accessed the listservs archive, which um, had me look at over 2,400 originating posts. So originating posts were those posts that started a thread. So I wasn't looking at all the responses and all of the replies, but I was looking at those initial posts that people put up there. Um, with the thought behind it is that those initial thoughts, those initial posts were usually questions or announcements about activities happening at a specific institution, usually the member's own institution, right? And so that's what I was targeting. And then when I collected the data, the structure of it, looked like this and it was kept in an Excel file. So I pulled back the message title from the archive. Then I had to assign a function, what type of question or an announcement. And I'll talk about that in a little bit as well as assign a topic to it. So what was the post about? Um, then I get into some of the demographic information about the poster or the person who wrote the post. So what department or division they're from, what type of role they had, what type of institution type they came from, 
the number of posts or responses attached to that post, if it was viewed additional times, the author's name, responses by others, and the date of the post. So once again, I was capturing this between the inception of the listserv, so it went all the way back to the end of 2011, um, to the end of 2018. So when I looked at the message categories, I had two running categories running. Um, so there were functional categories, um, and these were established through the literature, um, generally through other studies that were looking at the serves and posts. So posts were categorized as either a question, a response as a new thread. So that came up um, when someone would forward a response or they would start a new thread as a response to what someone else said. So they wouldn't respond within the thread itself. It would be a whole new thread that they started. Um, an announcement, general comments, and then there were administrative posts as well. And then we had topic categories. Um, so through looking at the posts, these are the categories that were recognized that the posts would fall into. Um, the only ones that I think might be a little ambiguous by just looking at it are OER courses. So OER courses included posts that were seeking out or discussing general material. So they weren't just talking about textbooks. They might have just said, oh, I'm looking for OER to support this class. And they left it very general, right? They might be looking for supplementary material. It might have been videos. It was looking for material to support a specific course. Um, whereas OER textbooks, they were looking only for an OER textbook. So that's the differentiation between those two. Um, OER initiatives is another category here. And that would include any institutional or organizational efforts and questions or comments around those. So these usually had to deal with policies and procedures and different strategies. So a question for all of you, um, do any of you participate in an OER online community? And you can respond using that poll um, site again, if you still have it open or with your phone again. Great. So we have some active posters here. That's great. Excellent. I'll just let that continue to collect. I'm going to move on because this is what we found out what was happening in CCCOER, at least between 2011 and 2018. Um, this was the makeup. So this was the community groups that were identified. Um, the majority of the community members were administrators. Um, and then we had librarians coming up. And after that, we had instructors. And then it goes on down to that list of instructional designers, counselors. There was an archivist participating at one point, um, staff members of different institutions and organizations. There was some spam, but not too often. And then a couple, I think there was one unknown where I just couldn't track down where that individual came from. And then this is what the post looked like over time. So you'll see starting in 2011 over to 2018. And this is broken up by the different groups to see who was actively participating and what the trend looked like. So we can see that administrators um, were very active. And the administrator category here does include CCCOER administrators. So that might be why there's a high frequency of posting coming from there. But we'll see that instructional designers started to participate early on. And they had a slight increase in participation over the years. Librarians had a tremendous increase in participation as time went by, as did instructors. Um, but librarians really went up there, um, surpassing instructors and mm, getting close to the administrator role as far as participation is concerned. If we took out, or if we take out CCCOER staff and administrators, the participation rate looks like this. 
So here we have administrators from institutions and organizations that are not CCC OER, as well as staff. And we'll see that, that librarian participation actually exceeds the administrator role um, and is the most highly participating group out of the bunch here that was identified within that, within CCC OER. You have five minutes, Walter. Thank you. I'll push through this fast. <laughs> so um, this then gets broken down to community colleges specifically. So we have different community college roles here at the top. And over here running down this chart are the different functions of those messages that they posted. And you'll see that administrators still have a large participation or a high participation rate here um, from community colleges followed by instructors, which is then followed by librarians. And since my research was focusing on community college librarians specifically, I wanted to know what type of questions they were asking and to see if there was a certain trend or what topics were emerging as being more popular than others. So we'll see that OER courses became much more prevalent over time. We saw OER textbooks also rise as well as initiatives as being key areas or topics that librarians were asking about or participating in with this community. Okay, so we have a few minutes left here to take some questions. I'm gonna stop the share and let's see where we are. I don't know how we take questions in this type of forum. So I guess we could take them in the chat. If you have any questions. You can unmute yourself as well to yourself. ask questions or type them in the chat. Thank you so much, Walter. And you, um, oh, you got a question from Suzanne there. So I, is the ask for courses because people assume that. Yeah, that's a great question, Suzanne. Sometimes the posts, they weren't clear. And so since I couldn't ask the author of the post what they meant by their post, um, I could only take it for face value. So if they didn't say I'm looking for an OER textbook in this, and they just said I'm looking for an OER in this, um, then it got classified as a course. But if they specifically spelled out, I'm looking for an OER textbook, which a lot of them did, as we saw in the frequency of the posts, um, then it was definitely a textbook. And do I anticipate identifying lessons for other communities of practice? Yeah, so from the second stage, what we're finding are different themes. Um, from their participation from the librarians, which is actually um, reflecting different open educational practices taking place at their institutions. So sharing those details out with other communities, I think will be helpful in structuring what type of professional development might be targeted for different groups of people, as well as different structures that might be implemented or that they could prioritize. And Ryer, that, that is a little out of the scope of this research. I think they're good issues to have because I was focusing specifically only on this listserv. I wasn't pulling in the factors of um, why they were not or what was prohibiting them from participating. Instead, I was targeting those that demonstrated participation. about yeah and no ideas about instructional designers um and i think that's the other thing that this data could lend to is other research projects and topics right so there could be other user groups in there that rightfully deserve an investigation or an interview to see you know what's happening here what needs aren't being met um 
Is there a reason why there was a spike and then a drop? <laughs> I've put a link for further questions um, in the chat and we're going to move to the next presentation. Thank you so much, Walter and Una. What a great project. Thank you.